Recently we finished this helm and it took, what, two years? Not too bad. We're ready to create a heraldic crest for the top. We need to secure it though to the helm to make sure that it's not going to fall off, it's not going anywhere. You typically wear something like this during tournament. We've created the holes in the front, the back, and the sides to secure the base to the helm and then to the base, of course, we can attach the crest. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Since a three-dimensional crest was by the very early 14th century not something used on a battlefield, we'll think about questions like, what was the primary purpose of a crest? Would they have seemed outlandish or even ridiculous to someone living during that period? What benefit do they provide to the wearer? We'll get into those questions, but for this video, I'm gonna demonstrate one method you could use to construct a secure and handsome base. Anyone who wants or needs a pattern will find that information at the very end, just like part two of the helm. So let's get to this project. The base is made up of four pieces, four main pieces. Let's give them names so that you know which one I'm referring to. The topmost piece is leather, let's call it the top. Underneath this is a thin piece of wood, let's call it the board. Under this, the wood is held in place by another piece of leather, let's just call this the seat. Wrapped around these three is another piece of leather, let's call it the band. Well, the crown of my early 14th century Balzano helm replica is slightly rounded when you look at it in profile, so I want to give the crest a firm foundation and a flat surface. A very thin, approximately 4mm piece of basswood provides rigidity. At the time of filming this, the helm wasn't completely finished, so I estimated the sizes for the patterns. Originally, the top and the board pieces were cut from the same pattern, but I realized that the large stitching that we'll be using would require that the board be trimmed a little bit so that it could sit flat or lay flat against the top rather than on the edge of the stitching. Leaving 3 8 of an inch around the edge uh, probably is too much, but my cord is pretty thick. The top was cut from a thick 7 to 9 ounce vegetable tan leather, and the seat was cut from an old scrap of thinner leather somewhere around three to five ounces. After all the pieces are cut out, I smooth and round them a little bit if necessary with a block of fine sandpaper. At this point, we're ready to cut the band out and mark the spacing for the stitching. You may notice that the band isn't fully cut out on the right side, and that's because the helm still isn't finished, and I'm not exactly sure where the downward triangle or peak should be. It should line up with where the two metal plates meet, but since the helm hasn't been riveted at this point, it's difficult to say where that should be exactly. I can trim this down at some point down the road. For now, I put the spacing at half an inch between the holes and then line them up with the top piece. There's about 50 holes around the top. Cutting the leather, staining it, trying to make it look good. It's a lot like our scabbard builds. The gold string, it's really rope, was obtained at an upholstery store. Pretty common, but looks great. The trouble is it tends to unravel easily and it's extremely difficult to thread through something like a hundred holes. Since I can't put a needle on the end, melting a big glob of hot glue and then working it into a point as it dries is a pretty decent solution. Just at about this point I was finishing the helm and found that this base wouldn't fit properly. It was noticeably too large. But I finished this base anyway and began on a second, slightly smaller base. The top piece in the band had to be made considerably smaller. I used the same pattern for the board and the seat and just made slight adjustments to make it all fit. To ensure that the front of the base is aligned with the center of the band, it's helpful to tie it or attach it somehow. You don't want to start stitching your gold rope and then realize at some point that they aren't aligned. Due to the delicate nature of the gold rope, it's very difficult to back out the stitches. So planning ahead definitely helps. Once it was all laced up, I used some gold thread to tie the rope together so it wouldn't unravel internally. The last step is to sandwich the board between the top and the seat. This is definitely the part that I enjoy. I think it's because I get to mold the leather just a little bit. Just like the other leather tooling that we've done in the past, thoroughly soaking the leather, at least the part we want to work, uh, makes it supple and easy to manipulate. It needs to fit snugly against the sides without showing. At this point, I'll also use the barge all-purpose cement on the board and secure it to the underside of the top. To hold the seat in place, we'll poke holes with a dozen tendy nails. The holes are actually poked with an awl, and then the nails are pressed into the holes. Then we'll cut them 90% of the way through. At this point, it's not a bad idea to sew them back together. It doesn't have to be perfect, and it's not. 
You can see how the nail head is nearly about to fall off. I find it easier to get them in place if you cut them mostly, but not all the way through. And then with a pair of nippers, the excess can be easily removed. After this, washers will hold them in place. Just like when we did the riveting with the helm, it's necessary to make the nails spread out. So I usually do this before putting on the washer. If I had to make a third base, and I really hope I won't have to, I'd probably make the washers myself, just like the helm. But hopefully this one will suffice. After all the nails are firmly in place, it's just about done. The light brown crest is way too big, but the mahogany colored one is, well, it could be smaller, but just by a tad, fits pretty well. Leather lace can be used to secure the base once the holes are lined up and punched. I still have the little card that aligns with the helm so that the spacing is correct. Saves a little time. When the band's marked, I use the punching tool. For the lacing, we really don't need more than a few inches for each piece that we cut. Maybe four or five. Even though it really isn't seen because it's going to be hidden under some kind of drapery, I think it turned out pretty well. It's solid. It's neat. Maybe not as perfect a fit as I'd like, but it's okay. You can see that everything is just tied for the moment. Eventually, we'll use the ties to secure a liner as well. You could top the base with a cloth if you wanted to. I'd like the crest to have a more elaborately draped cloth, but this red wool will do pretty well for right now. I cut out a circle about 24 inches in diameter and then use a couple feet of some fancy roping and then just trim the top as needed. So the helmet's finished, the crest base is finished. Lately I've been telling you about what to expect next. We've got one more part on this helm, the actual crest, and then a liner that you can pretty much use on any helmet. I'm gonna do that. I'm also working on some new scabbard making techniques, designs that high-end scabbard makers use but you can expect some different things from me as well. I'll let you know more about that soon. Thanks for watching today. If you waited for the patterns, here they are.